Hi, I'm Mitch Seekins, the vocal coach. Welcome to my Sing Like a Pro interview series where you hear from the professionals themselves what it takes to do what they do. This episode features Ian Thornley from Big Wreck. pleasure to work with Ian in 2016 and 2017. He came to me with concerns about some issues that were beginning to show up in his voice. Being a big fan of his spectacular vocals and music, I was honored to help out. In this heartfelt interview, what I would like everyone to take away from this is, even with the talent and skills and love for what he does, even Ian Thornley can have a hard time with things. And if you are on a similar path of building or maintaining a career, take solace in knowing that you're not alone with the struggles. It's all part of the journey. Mr. Thornley, yes. how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Excellent. Uh, got a little foggy today. It was a late one last night, but yeah. uh, you know, I'm late for me nowadays. Is anything past midnight is just. Um, <laughs> and we went we went a little past midnight because there was a as I was telling you earlier there was some technical difficulties technical issues, yeah. um, that uh, unforeseen and they and it, it caused us to run late, but we got our work done and uh, yeah, back at it today. Good, good, good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. It's, uh, no problem. It's, uh, of course. it's um, you know, like I, like I was telling you, it's, I'm, I'm trying to just do a series of, of interviews of, of people yeah. at your level and uh, just get the information on what it actually takes to do what you guys do, you know, because yeah. a lot of people don't understand, you know, what, what the mindset is and, and, and how everything kind of flows. Yeah. Well, I think, I think uh, mindset is a good, is a good uh, window to go through um, mm -hmm. to get into it. But I, I, you know, my mindset has changed drastically, you know, throughout, I've been doing this a while. Yeah. And uh, initially, I, I was I was dead set against even having a mindset because that wouldn't be authentic enough and that wouldn't be real, the, mm. you know, whatever, yeah. whatever conversation I had going back then. Um, so things like warming up and, and whatnot, like I, and I've told the story before, I probably told you, but uh, like Miles was the first guy I ever saw warm up his voice. Right. And we were on tour together in 98 or 99. Right. Um, and yeah, he was always like an hour before they went on. I was like, where'd Miles go? Uh, and he was he was in the van, like in the passenger seat of the van. Like, you want to make all these weird noises? And, and I'm like, what are you doing in there? And then, of course, he gets on stage and does what he does. Right. And, uh, and I was just like, holy shit. Yeah. Um, and it was really like, uh, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I was uh, initially I was probably and I, and I still am like, well, he does what he does and I do what I do. You know, I can't I don't. Um, and that's a, you know, that's kind of a, a coward's way out because I was still, I was still getting on stage and, and having a great night or having a shit night and not really knowing vocally why, like, even if I was in good voice and good health, um, you get on stage and sometimes it's just, it just, you're working hard for stuff. And I had no idea why. Um, and a lot of it sort of through the years, that aspect of just sort of you know well that doesn't feel like it like it should yeah. and then just kind of learning sort of physically how things should feel um and then uh, getting a lot of the pointers from miles along the way you know sort of every five or six years and give a give a, a little tip or a little you know and things like that and i would i would take i would take them to heart and i would you know at one point he gave me uh he gave me a, a recording of of his vocal lesson that he had had with with, uh, I think it was Ron Anderson. Ron Anderson, yeah. Yeah, yeah heard and, about that. and just a lot of the stuff that they were going over and a lot of this sort of vernacular and it, and it all just kind of started to resonate, you know, no pun intended, but it all, it kind of, it, yeah. it just started to make sense. Um, and then I started to warm up a little more um, and, and take it a little more seriously. 
Right. Um, because I mean, it only takes one, and I've had a few, but one really bad night. And, and I, you know, I can remember as we've all had them, um, probably not you, but, but like oh, your version of a bad night. Is well. fantastic. But this was like, this was something other. I, we, we were, it was like a Super Bowl thing. It was in town in Toronto. Yeah. And, uh, and I had come down with something and I was like, it was, and it was just getting progressively worse throughout the day. And I was like, oh no. Well, I'm like taking this, taking that, and just like anything to sort of keep it from, you know, getting in the way. Yeah. And it was a shortened, it was like a halftime thing. So it was a shortened set. Uh, I think we only played five songs or something. Um, and I get into the first song. And, and, I, and I'm like, okay, I'm really trying to take it easy. This is before you and I had met. Right. Like it's several years. Um, and I'm sort of taking it easy, but you know, there's some higher notes that you can push in. And I think it was so far so good or something like that, whereas mm-hmm. you can lean into them a bit. Um, and I was like, oh, it's there, it's there. I'm good. So the first two songs were great. And then it was Albatross was the next one, which, was, which is like, requires a different kind of, I, and I wouldn't have known back then, and I still probably wouldn't know how to, but, but I don't try to sing that one super hard. It's just yeah. a, it's supposed to be a little cleaner and yeah. a little more singier. It's not shouting, you're not yelling. Yeah. Um, and, and, I, and I honestly, I would open my mouth and I didn't know what was going to come out. Yeah. And this is like right from the, from the intro, which is not particularly challenging. And I was like, why is that note? Oh my God. And then you kind of have to readjust and then I know I want to sing a C sharp here and, and, you know, put X it's just nothing was where it should be. Yeah. And then of course, you know, you get into the, to the higher parts. Um, and, and, and it's a pretty naked intro, man. Like that's pretty like, there's just a guitar or two and a vocal that's going up to high B's and stuff. And, yeah. and, a, um, yeah. And, and it was horrible, man. And, and it, crushed me like i i went home that night and, and i'd sat by myself for a while you know yeah. just like am i cut out for this should i be doing this like maybe all those years ago when we were looking for a singer that was the right call it was that bad <laughs> um i know it's and then, and then I, <clears throat> yeah and then it just again i probably reached out to miles after that like dude i you know and maybe that's when when he gave me that tape mm. And it was just a lot of a lot of the things that you and I do, yeah. um, but obviously I'm I'm sort of a fly on the wall and don't really know. I'm just sort of grabbing things here and there and doing my own thing with it. Like that's got to be what they're talking about, that kind of thing. I know. Um, I know. But then when you and I met, it was like okay. And I still reach out to you when I'm on the road and I get yeah. sick. I'm like, how am I going to get through this, dude? Um, <laughs> because it, because it, I mean, I'd still go back to that place where where you open your mouth and you don't know what's going to come out. And there's not a worse feeling in the world, man. People call singers this and they're that. And, um, <laughs> but it really is, it's terrifying. And you're, and you're, you're, yeah, you're at the whim of whatever's going on in here. And I, you know, so as much control as, 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 as you can gain over it, like that's what sort of where my mindset is now yeah. is, is that it's like, well, I want to make, I want to cut like a bad night. I want it to still be passable. That's right. You know, and it's brutal for me and it's really, you know, difficult and, and it's exhausting because especially when you're sick and you're trying to navigate through a lot of these songs that we have and, uh, which are not easy to sing. None of well, them. Well, so I mean, if you're in good voice and, and you're relaxed and you're, and you're, yeah. and you're warmed up, it's not hard. Um, it's fun it, and it can be fun. You know, when you, when you go for something high and you pin it and, and then it's like, well, there's so much gas in the tank right now. I really want to lean into this. Yeah. And you can just put more, you know, and, and I love that. But when it's not there, it's exhausting because it's, you're, you're, you know, you're in a, it's a high wire act. Yeah, it is. You know, like uh, with the, you know, with the, the masterclass that I do at the beginning of everybody who studies with me, we talked about the psychological end of things yeah. and, you know, the, the amount of stress, the physical stress and the emotional stress, the emotional trauma that a singer experiences yeah. is, is horrible. It yeah. can be horrible. It's it can also be bad. elating. Like yeah. when you nail it, there's yeah, nothing yeah. better. 
you know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, you know, playing guitar the way you do when you nail something, well, that's going to yeah. give you the same response. But having, you know, the body as the instrument, your body as the instrument, it, it just, there, there's something about it, you know. Um, when, uh, you know, so you didn't start out as a vocalist, right? No, 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 heavens no. You were you were a keyboardist first. Is, I saw a post yeah. on Instagram. I think. Yeah, when I I started I started on piano, hmm. and quickly moved into synthesizers and stuff like that. And I was yeah. in I was in a band when I was started in eighth grade, eighth eighth and ninth grade. I was playing in a pop band around town. Nice. And I was a little synth dude, um, which was a great experience for me. And uh, yeah. you know, they were all all the other people in the band were. Were, were much older and, and, and sort of seasoned and, and uh, have gone on to do some great things. But, but I, I uh, yeah, and then, and then I eventually I found my way to guitar. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know, the, the sort of immediacy of, of that connection was, was I did just, it just brought me to a different place than, than piano did. Yeah. Um, even though it's, it's all music. But yeah. I think the, the connection to it, I don't know. Yeah. I still play, I still play every day. And if I can, it'll be all day every day. It's, yeah. It's one of those lifelong obsessions. But yeah. Um, yeah, and, and then I, I went to school. I went to Berkeley yep. for three years um, with guitar as my my instrument. Right. Um, and again, I, you know, that's not gonna make you a great guitar player, but it, it, it's a great place to you know there's all these other like-minded kids who are who are chasing the same kind of thing even if it's very different and, yeah and, um and it was all it was a jazz, lot of the right? what's up it was all jazz right yeah yeah i mean they use jazz as the sort of curriculum to right to explain things you know and, and a lot of the sort of stuff that i've been dicking around with on guitar and you know i've already started writing and coming up with bits that i liked and fitting them together and you know, sort of reverse engineering a lot of the stuff that I couldn't figure out. And, mm -hmm. um, I mean, at Berkeley, would, it would give you the names of those things, which just it just helps expedite the process of a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and also open again, your mind to different different directions, like different, yeah. different possibilities of what you. Can yeah. Do. Oh, for sure. I, yeah, I'll never knock. Um, you know, schooling yourself on yeah. uh, just you know, it's not keeping it real or in, anything like that. I, I think that that's garbage. Like the truth is, like it, like the more you learn, the the, the further you will go, and then the more you learn, the, the re you realize that how much further you have to go, and then it just never ends. It's just a I know you know, it's, it's a uh, <laughs> obtaining his tail, his t chasing his tail kind of deal because it, yeah. it you never you never arrive. I've never I haven't arrived. Um, but yeah, uh, and then with vocals, it was it was a, uh, and I've told this story many times too. We were, we were looking for a singer for a, right. a while, and that's hard, man. You know, especially if I was going to be the the primary writer. Um. Yeah, it was it was it was really hard, and and people don't, you know, obviously, not everybody thinks the way you do about. You know, this is how this should go. This should move like this, and and just those things. And I'm using a very base level yeah. example here, but and there was just people that just wouldn't fit. And some of the great, great singers and great musicians, and it just wasn't quite gelling, or um, you know, one of the other guys in the band didn't get along with it. Whatever it was, yeah. we tried and tried, and then I there was an eventual. There eventually got to a there was a, a fuck it moment, like you know, and I think it was Brian and I it was just like, dude fuck it you sing and i eventually was who like said, who said I'll that? Sing. Who said brian that? brian oh brian did yeah it would have been him I, and i think the other guys were were encouraging me to do so as well yeah um but i think you know brian and I, I like brian was sort of like my big brother at the time like he was the right. he was slightly older than me and and yeah um yeah and i would do like if he if he if i would sing on a demo and and, and if he if he said it sounded cool then i'd be like you know, right, right, sort right. of seeking his approval, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I eventually it just kind of jumped in, um, not knowing anything about, and I, you know, my my version of learning how was was just doing it, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, um, I mean, I was the, I was the same as well, and and most people are when they you know when they start out, it's just kind of like okay, let's just yeah see what happens, you know, see yeah. what happens. Um, were there any influences that that uh, that you had um, to kind of guide oh, yeah, you I mean, that? Yeah, I, I well, initially, vocally, not really, um, uh, I, because I would just kind of like, well, those the you know what Freddie Mercury does is magic and what Jeff Buckley does is magic. And I can't, mm -hmm. I'm not a magician, yeah. you know, I'm just a guitar player who's singing. Right. There's still, I still have that mentality too. Right, right. Um, <laughs> that I heard Phil Collins said that he says, I, I'm not a singer who plays some drums. I am a drummer who does some singing. And right. I, I'm like, that's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I, not, I don't think I, I don't think I, there was never anything I was shooting mm -hmm. for. Right. Um, until like maybe later on when, when, uh, I started to mess around with range and, and, and going higher and I, I, you can probably speak to this better than I can, but I've always been of the mind that you're, you get what you get, you know, yeah. um, you can probably grow your range and, and there's things you can do to, to get higher and lower and, and, and maintain a good tone, but, um, I think the the actual sound of it. I mean, you can't change this and and this and all the things that that make the noise. You can't. I can't change it. Yeah. Um, so it's like as much as I would want to sound like Robert Plant or BB King or even even Joe Strummer or yeah. all all these guys who I just have these voices that that get into me. Yeah. Um, I end up just sounding like me, or is it people always say, "Oh, it's Chris Cornell." I'm like, I, I, I sure that, and you know what? That's that's great because he's awesome. So, um, yeah, yeah, he was, and I mean, you know, I can, I can, I can see why people say that. It's the same kind of tonal quality. You guys yeah. don't sing, you don't sing the same, but the the, the tonal quality is similar. Yeah, it's similar. I, I guess I hear you. You know, you know? I, but like there was there was a a time when it was you know, I guess it was the early nineties and, uh, and that the whole, whole grunge in Seattle mm -hmm. thing happened. And a lot of it really affected me because I, because I'm such a big Zep guy. Yeah. Um, and I'm such a big who guy. And, right. and a lot of it seemed like it came directly from that. Um, yeah. and like a Pearl Jam had a huge impact on me. Right. Um, just, and it was like, it was just the whole thing that, that, that got me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't like, oh, the way Eddie does this or the way, you know, Stone does that. It, it was just the whole thing. I was like, I got it. Um, because and 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 I, I later, you know, I think it's I think it's just because it feels like they mean it. You know, it feels like yeah. Eddie means it. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, it, shortly thereafter, every singer that would come out of the woodwork had the R thing oh, that he and Lane Staley were doing, the her <laughs> thing. And I, you know. <laughs> I even I even fucked with it a bit on a demo, <laughs> and I remember hearing it back going, "Nope, that's no, not no, me." No. And I had a discussion with uh, a good friend of mine who's a wonderful singer, uh, Danny Graves. I and mean, years ago, we had this conversation about those kind of singers, the er yeah. guys. Yeah. Um, and he's like, "Yeah, it's a crutch. It's a it's like an easy way to get your pitch, and it's and it's an easy way to sound like I mean it, man." Yeah. And it's like you see. The people who are doing it tend to forget that like Eddie and Lane actually did fucking mean it. Like that's, yeah, that was real. And, yeah. and, you know, I don't think he does it anymore, Eddie, but uh, you know, whatever. I, he's such a great, um, and Chris, the same thing. Like I, I, I wasn't as, as much into Soundgarden uh, because I think they were sort of more Sabbath derived, yeah. Yeah. that sort of really uh, low tuned, heavy, dirgy thing, which I know the big wreck is known for. Um, but it, you know, that would have been a Brian influencing me and my musical taste, but him bringing in King's X, him bringing in Soundgarden and stuff like that. And then I, I went through a period where I just loved Soundgarden. Um, yeah. and it's just, yeah, but I, and I'm sure all that, you know, I think you are what you eat. So all those influences though, they're, they're going to come in, but you know, like we were saying earlier, I still open my mouth and I don't sound like, like the guy I'm trying to sound like. It's just not possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah I, I want to be Steve Perry. Like, who doesn't want to be? Who doesn't want that voice? You know. Oh, I know. Um, like, there's so many great voices that, uh, and it's, and I'm not just talking like 
technique and licks and listen to the control. I just mean the tone. The sound. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Like, there's nothing better than than Rock the Casbah and London Calling. Like Joe Strummer, I believe every word that guy says. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and the sound of his voice it just it just sounds like he's emptying the tank for you. And that's what yeah. he's doing. So yeah. yeah. Um so by the time the first record came, mm -hmm. how how long it was was it we guys kind of work in for a couple of years before you did the first record? Like um yeah, I guess like, like we started maybe 90, maybe 94, 95, we'd started to, you know, put demos together and dick around with stuff. No. Um, but as far as, um, as far as doing a, like calling it a band, I don't really know when that, but it was, it wasn't that long mm. um, of a time from when we really started to, okay let's do this yeah um, until it was like okay well now we're 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 looking at getting signed with atlantic and we're going to do this and we're, it wasn't that long right um and certainly not enough time for me to because the first time i went in to do vocals on what would eventually become the album like the first album was was two made from two different sessions that were demo sessions uh -huh. like those are the demos that were that were turned into the record and I still remember the first of those sessions. I think it was three sessions, actually. Yeah. But, but, but from the one that we didn't do at Presence, I don't think we used anything. Maybe we used uh, Fall Through the Cracks or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I still distinctly remember like putting it off and putting it in the vocals and putting it off. I still do that. Like It's always <laughs> the last thing. That, yeah. um, and I remember, remember stepping up to the mic and then, and then hearing you know my voice going through that i think it was a, an 87 into an orange county and then they you know fed it fed me a little bit of delay or reverb and i was just like oh man this is and then and then you know uh, once you get past that sort of initial whatever then it's like okay well i can play with this yeah. and it doesn't sound stupid yeah. you know and i'm looking through the glass and it's like i don't see brian going oh you know yeah of course today doing this it was it yeah. was you know they were like it was encouraging and that's it's sort of the mental game like once you get out of your own way then it's like okay what can we do yeah you know and i didn't know about i didn't know how high i could go i didn't really mess around up there and and you can hear it on the first record there's a couple of high notes but there's they're just sort of stuff where you're yeah playing, some you harmonies and stuff i'm just like oh i can do it yeah. i didn't i didn't know if i had a ceiling i didn't i didn't really dick around up there and as far as singing hard and, and getting uh some grit on the sound i would just push you know yeah. yeah which is not good like i remember i remember after i did the vocal for overemphasizing i was like that's probably not a good idea to do that <laughs> like that every right. night you know like a, a yeah I, you know we can maybe get into that too but i i sing i tend to sing differently live um slightly than i would in the studio in the studio you know yeah. If I, especially if it's a Friday, it's a Friday night. We're not going in Saturday and Sunday. Um, for some of the rockier, more you know, more grittier parts, then I'll actually do something that's probably not healthy yeah. and probably not good for my throat just to get the sound. Yeah. Um, because because there's I, that sound of a voice just on the brink, where it's like they're doing damage. Yeah. I love that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that noise. Yeah. So I, I sometimes it's the only way to get it is just to you know you're good and warmed up and you're loose and I'm singing all day and everything's great and it's like okay well let's circle back to that thing I'm gonna have another stab at that yeah you know the ridiculously high and hard and then and then you you leave leave the studio you know sort of with a whisper it's like yeah, yeah. job well done <laughs> and, um, and it, part of it is 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 knowing okay. I can do this because I know I've got like two or three days off. Yeah, yeah. Live, live. I don't get that. Live, yeah. I don't get. Yeah, you don't get that. I mean, my 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 regimen uh, when we're on tour is is a lot more strict than it is in the studio. Like in the studio, I I, I always I'll make sure that I'm loose and I'll stretch. Um, yeah. I'll stretch it out and try to clean out. You know, especially if it's cold. Um, try to have everything cleaned out and and. Um, 
yeah and then i'll just i'll just kind of start in with the song you know this sort of like lightly singing it to myself yeah. you know um and just how i'm going to approach certain lines how i'm going to approach certain things and, um and then again it's the same thing as when it was when i first did it once the headphones come on it's like okay now it, you're now in this box and now you know what you can work with and what you can do yeah um, yeah um, you know, and as I've gotten older, oddly enough, this is another thing we've talked about is like, I, I feel like my range has grown, like my box has gotten bigger, I've been, my trick bag is bigger, but I feel like just vocally, I'm, I'm able to do stuff with a lot more ease and I have a lot more control over it, but stuff that I would never even attempted 20 years ago. Yeah, I know, because it like I, I think we talked about that um, the human male voice doesn't mature until about the age of 35. And then right. you've got this window of being in your vocal prime until you're about 70. So right in that time, all the bottom end comes in, the top end uh, just gets clarified, a little more um, stable. Yeah. Uh, everything just sits. Bigger, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, uh, I'm <laughs> my balls that, dropped. What's that? My balls finally dropped when I was 35. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i my uh you know my my uh a's a flats g's and and i've even got f sharps now uh you know when i was 25 there was i, I wasn't singing below you know a d a b flat like i mean that's yeah, yeah. that's pushing it but and, and it's so funny you know it, it is it's just genetics in that first record because it you know to 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 my ear and to everybody's ear there there is definitely a big rec sound. There's definitely an Ian Thornley sound. And that's just you kind of opening your mouth and kind of doing what you do. So yeah. there wasn't really much thought. It was an organic kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that early on it was just a lot of it was a lot of feeling things out. Yeah. And and I mean there has to be a certain amount of trust for me. That back then there had to be like you know, like you no know, no cracking jokes while I'm doing this, right? Because I'll, because I'll just fucking leave. Like that I was I was that no, like a yeah. don't You'll no fall apart. like try. To, I'd have the lights off in the live room where I was. Like I'd make right. sure that the lights were off. Yeah, keep the lights on in the control room. Like I, it was that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, literally. Like I was that. I was that. You know, in my Agile. head. About. <laughs> yeah, and then once you once you get into it and, and you get some encouragement, then the rest of it was like, yeah, I was just sort of, you know, what sounds cool, and then you yeah. just sort of lean off the mic and look in, um, and if they're high five, and then it's like, okay, let's do that, then that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. And back then, of course, everything was on tape, so you just start at the beginning and go to the end. Uh, and anything yeah. you want to fix? Okay, let's go in there. Any, any ideas for doubles or harmonies or anything? We got an extra track. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, all that stuff was very, you know, and I was 23 or whatever. Like I was, yeah. I was, I was young. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, you know, it's very different now. I just, I still, but like I said, I, I still put the vocals off till. Till the end. Yeah. And then, and then once yeah. I get into it, I really, I really do enjoy it. I really do. Like I've come to enjoy it a lot. And then, Good. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're, when you're, um, working on tunes and I actually want to uh, give a shout out to uh, a student of mine his, his name is uh, Cody uh, Kerrigan he's um, he's working on his PhD for oh, nice. uh, composition um, oh, and he he was wanting me to ask uh, you know um, as he's a he's a big fan uh, how much play you do when you when you write a song do you start with a guitar lick and then add vocals to that or is there a melody that comes out and you try to write something and how much do the vocals change from the inception to the final product is it a lot of experimentation in the studio yeah yeah there is to the latter i i generally it starts from from the music first hmm. um sometimes sometimes the whole thing falls in your lap and those yeah. are the good ones those are the those are the lucky the lucky ones you don't have to slug it out but but generally speaking it starts from it starts from the music first and and i already like i will start putting a picture together in my mind as i'm as i'm piecing the music together or as i'm going through it i'll have something in my i know where my in is you know 
go yeah. off, you know, what depending on the mood and depending on the key and depending on all these different factors that it, it'll just, it tells me like your voice is going to go in here. Right. Um, and sometimes, as you know, I'm sure, like sometimes you just open your mouth and, and something comes out and you're like, and you get, yeah. and you get um, goosebumps. And it's like, yeah. that's, that's my in, that's my spot. Yeah. The hair on and, the back and, of my head. And then, yeah. And then yeah. you start flushing out melodies and, and it tells me, you know, and then it'll tell me what the words are, what the story is going to be. And, and it really, you know, you're just sort of, you're just sort of rummaging through and clearing away dust. And it's like, okay, I see this now. And yeah. sometimes it's, it's, um, it goes against the grain of the music. And sometimes it's, it's, it's right in, in lockstep with the music and um, all those, all those different factors that um, obviously they're all choices that are formed by your taste um, and, yeah. and your influences and all the stuff that you love. Yeah. Um, but, but all of those, you know, I, I, like, like we said earlier, I think just getting out of your own way and getting out of your head and, and letting the, letting the music tell you what it, what it wants, where it wants yeah. to go. Yeah. And every once in a while, you know, and, and I can hear it in our stuff. And sometimes I can hear it in other bands and artists as well. When, when there's a, sometimes there's a moment where there's a choice where the, the writer said, I'm going to throw this thing in here. Yeah. And it's, and it, there's something um, sort of cosmically jarring about it a little bit. Sometimes that's the intention. And when I do it, that's usually what I'm like, well, I'm going to throw in a bar of three. Those kind of things, they're, they're conscious moves. Yeah. Um, you know, as opposed to a riff that sort of fell out and it happens to be in seven. That's different. You know, yes. all these things are, um, they're all sort of tools at your, at your disposal. And then when it comes to doing the vocal, I usually, I'll start with, with just scatting because I know where the melodies are going to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then as the words start to emerge, and sometimes those are just like, boom, there's a, there's a story, the story in the song. And it's, um, yeah. And then th 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 sometimes some, some, some of them come easily and some of them are, are like, nope. Like I have a couple songs, every record that, that just, you know, kick my ass. And I'm like, nope. And I'm rewriting and rewriting. And it's like, maybe it's, maybe it's my melodies. Maybe I'm too choppy with the, with the melody and it should just be one soaring long, you know? And then it's like, well, if I do that, I got to change the whole narrative. I got to change the whole story because, right. you know, this word fits great, but it doesn't make any sense with, with you know, with, yeah. all these things that, um, and I, that can be a drag and it can be very draining. Uh, and it's one of those things like, you, you know, very rarely in those situations do I know that I've got it right. <laughs> yeah. because it's not because it didn't tell me i'm still kind of telling it what right. did this is this is the right way and this is looking around the room going right 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 um as opposed to like when you have the the two speakers are just saying yep you got it yeah um yeah, yeah and then and then you just put on way too many tracks of vocal way too many tracks of guitar and uh, you know start cutting it down call it yeah yeah uh how do you how do you prep for uh, you know, to, to do a record vocally, how do you, how do you do, do you, do you start saying, cause I mean, you gotta be in shape, right? Yeah. You gotta be vocally in shape. If you're putting, you know, stuff, you know, committing to stuff on, on a record, you, you yeah. don't want to be okay. Well, I'm a little rusty. You know, like you want to be in shape for sure. Um, cause you know, studios, one thing touring is a, is a different animal. Like it's a different yeah. thing. You yeah. know, what, what, what is it you do? Um, I mean, generally, speaking it's uh, the process is we're, when i finished pre-production or demoing like um you know by then yeah, there's well, still not, a lot of singing right it's not it's not super it's not as honed in as, as where I, i'm gonna want it but um i did even having said that sometimes it is like some of the demos that that we've done over the years have just been like well that's good enough to be on the record yeah. because it's just it's just so flushed out and yeah um but it, but yeah I, I mean generally it's it's going to be pretty close to you know game ready and then and then uh, you know i'll do uh, i'll do warm-ups and it's usually the first the first song sometimes i like i'll circle back or ratsy would be like we want to circle back and um you know sometimes i have to circle back and try the verse, first verse again you know once yeah. i'm yeah uh, yeah. 
but but yeah and sometimes it's the song you know uh you want to start with something that's not too challenging and that doesn't you know where you're not reaching for the stars and right. trying to and trying to play around up there yeah uh, it's one thing to just squeeze a high note out as hard as you can but it's another thing to actually sing it and yeah you know, play with it yeah and, um, and, and yeah that did you know a lot all, all the stuff that you've taught me is 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 all comes in handy there like that'll that'll set me up and and you know, even when, if I'm in the shower and I have to sing, I'm, I'm doing lip rolls. Good. And that, I find even like this morning I did it and it, I just find it set, it sets my voice up right for the day. And that's not, I'm not, when I start warming up before a show or, or to sing in the studio, I'm not, um, yeah, I'm not starting cool. from scratch. Yeah. And I, I don't know <laughs> what that does. Maybe that's just a psycho psychological thing for me and, um, well, so yeah, it's it, just, it gets everything moving. It gets the blood yeah. flowing because it's a physical instrument, you yeah. know. Um, uh, so you just you just got to get things working. That's all. You, you, yeah. just, you just get it moving. I, I just I, I just it's kind of like it's like a muscle. It's like stretching this or that's or, right. Exactly. You know, yeah. Any anything that you're, it's one of those. It's one um, of those. and it's you know I'm still I'm getting over some kind of cold that I had last week. It wasn't the cove. Um, somehow I've managed to, I've managed to bob and weave. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I haven't got it. Us too. I'm, I'm Us still, too. I mean, touch wood, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. And, and even that, like when I'm, when I'm sick, that's one, another one of the times when I'll, I'll be, I'll be just doing, just doing lip rolls, not like running whole scales or arpeggios or anything, but just, you know, going up into head and then coming down and going back up just to see where I'm at. And yeah. Uh, it and honestly it just it sets my voice in, in a in a more relaxed stable even for even for speaking right like even yeah. um and yeah I think you know like anything else if it's not working it's not working um and and that that's happened sometime not not so much in the last few years but there have been times where I'm like yeah it's not in it's not there today yeah it, um, it is a, it is a physical uh, like a, a human instrument and, and yeah. it, it is tied uh, like you were saying, you know, with with training, the the goal is to you know, bad days, you know, are up here as opposed to you know twenty years ago or ten years ago where bad days may have been down here. You know, it's a much narrower performance uh, ratio. You know, you're not you're not swinging from here to here anymore, yeah. and and that helps you psychologically as well, knowing that you can well, for sure you you can sing through stuff. 100%. In in terms of you know vocal recovery, um, is there ways that you deal with it now? Then you know that have changed from from before. I mean, um, yeah, I, I mean, not really. Um, mm -hmm. I'll try to I'll try not to speak so much if if yeah, and especially when you're not when you're feeling a little under the weather, um, that's when I really notice it. Yeah. Uh, Cause like sometimes it'll be, I'll have a cold and, and there's a couple of days where it's like, you know, I still have to do the gig or, you know, I don't want to do, but, but there's going to be a couple of days where it's almost impossible. And yeah. then on either side of that there, it's like, okay, I can work, I can make this work. Yeah. Um, and I still make the mistake of, of apologizing to the audience. Cause it's like, ah, I can let them down. Um, but it, but it, but yeah, I can still make it work. The tone is still there. And, yeah. and the range and the you know but but you know maybe the longevity is not there or whatever it is the um, there. but after after that show like i'll be on the bus and, I, and i'll sound like sam elliott like it's just fried yeah and, and that's when you know that's when I, I need the most you know tea and, and all all of that and and sleep and, and, and sleep um, yeah little humidifiers for the bunk and all those things that that'll yeah. that'll get you through you yeah know? Yeah, and you know the humidifier thing is so important. A lot of people don't. Advil cold. We need to get a sponsorship from Advil cold and sinus too. I know, I know that stuff. I like especially Paul. I think it was Paulo that initially hit me to it. But I was like, man, this stuff is like, this just saved my ass. I know. It just clears everything out, and so of course we're always chugging water. So I'm not worried about dehydrating, which I think Advil cold and sinus does. It just dries yeah. everything out. But it's like yeah. if you're slamming water. You, you yeah. know you're in, you're in good shape yeah i got dave yeah. onto it and like if he's you know, if you feel a little a little rough and dave's doing a lot of singing nowadays he's 
fucking great. Sounds fantastic. Great. Um, and, and he's just, and he'll just take a couple of Advil cold sinus a couple hours before the show. And it's like, you know, it just gets you through. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing uh, I think you need to be cognizant with that stuff is, is if you're really bad and you take it, um, it can, uh, it can accelerate damaging yeah. stuff. Um, it's just, <laughs> it, just needs that, to be, it just needs to be done you know, responsibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, but I, you know, for me, it's, uh, you know, it's, and sometimes it's even, it's just a, a psychological thing. Oh, you know, I've had a long so flight. Much. Yeah. The day of the show, which yeah. sucks, and you get out and, you, and you're just like, I, what's? <gasps> uh, it's naughty and oh, oh something's no, something's not right, something's not right. I have a cold sign. I don't know. I'm just, uh, yeah, okay, I feel great. I feel, yeah. This is gonna be a good yeah. show. Yeah. Um, and another thing that's actually good for that uh, is nasal rinsing. Uh, I used to oh, I <laughs> the neti pot thing. Yeah, yeah, can't do oh. that. <laughs> no, not not this soldier. I oh, okay. <laughs> too okay. weird. Yeah, I used to. I used to do. I it love to every... because I know that it would help, right? Yeah, everything out. But yeah. I, yeah. Well, I have not taken that plunge. Maybe one day I'll take it. You know the ones that you see in the TV commercial. Well, you just... like. Yeah. It's just like... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used to do it after care. every flight. When I was doing shows, yeah, I just, you know what? Maybe I'll get one of those. You know, well, it is just see what all the hubs about. <laughs> very, very uncomfortable thing to yeah to work on. Um, uh, so we worked together on you know 2016, 2017. Um, is there anything that stands out on the stuff that we did that that really? really made a difference uh just either in the consistency or the way yeah, you felt about things yeah i think uh i think consistency 100 percent. like that that is something that um i don't think anything's really changed tonally but i think it i i no. know that it's, i know that it's maintained and i yeah. i'm sure that, that that that's large part and due to, to working with you um, yeah. um but no, and I, and I think again, like I was saying about going to school, it's like just learning things, and, and just it demystifies a lot of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And there's a lot of things about it that I've never even like the diaphragmatic stuff is something I've never even, you know. I think Miles tried to explain it to me once, and I was like, okay, that's 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 for that's for advanced. That's for. I mean, that's, yeah. not, that's not me. Yeah. For. And he's like, dude, you're gonna he's, once you do it, you're gonna, and and that's something that I still I still um it's still going on going on in the back of my mind while i'm singing and there's some of the more challenging parts um all those things it's just that yeah there's a there's a there's a confidence that comes with um knowing you've got an 80 percent chance as opposed to a 40 percent chance of nailing it yeah. you know and, and and especially if you're a good voice and it's almost it's almost best when um the the, the conversation isn't there at all because I'm just like, well, I'm in, I'm in good shape here and, and everything's flowing and everything feels great. Um, and if you just check in with yourself every now and then, how am I feeling? And then just, and, and all that, all that diaphragmatic stuff, which is mechanics. And sometimes I'll, I'll trip onto it accidentally where I, I didn't, I, yeah. Yeah. And, and then, and then I'm just like, well, I could sing this note for four minutes. Like it just, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, you know, all of it is just, has helped me tremendously. You know, I don't think, uh, I'm sure I'd, I'd be in a different, and my voice would sound different than it does had it not been for meeting you. And, and I, it just, I, there's no way to maintain, especially the style of music we do, the, the style, style of singing that I do. And, and, and yeah. um, you know, how to avoid the certain pitfalls. Like, uh, because I, you know, I get swept up in, in the moment all the time, every night. Yeah. It happens yeah. to me every night. I'll get yeah. swept up and I'm like, I'm going for this and I'm emptying the tank on this one note. Yeah. And, and it's like, it, my version of that now is just like, they, well, let's save some for the end of the song, you know, yeah. you know like lean into it and make it, make it great. But, but yeah. let's, let's, you know, yeah. and then we also have the other 40 dates to worry about after this. So let's, you know, that's right. The breaks there. The but, it, but all of it has helped. Yeah, the interesting thing with you is, um, you know, through all the stages that I work with, the, the, the big one, the final one is something called blending. Mm -hmm. And you had that naturally 
in your voice. You, you had found your way to it, which is how you do all that, that top end stuff. But we, what you didn't have was the support. And it was as you, as you, you know, get older, just like, just like anything, I, I can't work out like I did when I was 30. I just, I can't, yeah. you know, and it's the same thing with the voice, even though you're in, you know, that vocal prime, the recovery time as you age just, just increases. So <laughs> once we establish the, you know, the, the, the support, the diaphragmatic stuff with you, it just kind of started connecting all that those mechanics together mm. and um because the, the one thing that you know I, I don't change people's voices i yeah. you know you change the sound that that's not what i do i show people how to do what they do because that's what sells records for them um in a healthy way so they they have the ability to do a 40 show um yeah. you know tour without tearing themselves apart yeah you know? Yeah. So it was interesting with you because you had the majority of it naturally, which is very rare. Just adding that that piece on just yeah, kind of stabilized everything for you. Yeah, it really did. It really did. And I still, you know, as you know, um, you get sick on the road. And like, oh. You're going to be one of my first calls. <laughs> Bitch, help. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the first show on the last... Bed. The last big tour. It's the first show we're in Boston. I don't have a voice. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. And it's just simply how you warm up. And even then, like, you know, there, there's a certain way of warming up, but it doesn't mean that <laughs> that gig's going to be fun. Yeah. You know, it's no, still going to be a lot of work, but at least hopefully you can get through it. Yeah. Uh, that's the major thing. Do you have any, you know, like personal tips that you would, you know, give to young singers or, you know, people coming up in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't presume to even, you know, I, I wouldn't know where to begin. Like, yeah. One of the things that I, that I tend to do early in a tour. And again, this is all preface with it, if I'm in good voice and in good health. Um, once my voice is ready, once it's there after warming up and I tend to warm up too long, a lot of the time. And I've, that's something I've been, sort of staying cognizant of in the last couple of years right um because sometimes i i just you know I'm, I'm like, save some for the show man yeah um, but you know it's like it's like blowing all your good ideas and sound check it's like yeah. well there's some part of your mind that's like well i've already been there I've already been and you're there. going off on some huge solo yeah, right. you, you miss all the all the gold because you're like well, i've already been there it's like yeah. no, nobody was there to see it so yeah. no you haven't yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But but yeah, as far as the warm up goes, one thing that I'll do early in a in a tour, and sometimes it, you know, sometimes the, the whole way through, but and depending on what we're starting with, the first song that we're starting with, um, is once I'm warmed up and everything's there, I'm I'm good. Is I'll I'll give a couple of blasts. Mm. Um, yeah. Before we go on, just to see, just to see, yeah, and just to see if the you know if the the sort of grit and that the whatever the thing is that when you're singing certain parts yeah. and you want that sound um i'll give a couple of blasts just to make sure you know i don't want to i don't want to do too many because yeah like i said you, get, you gotta be yeah you gotta be careful with those there's a there's a yeah. finite number of them yeah yeah exactly and and a lot of it is you know if you you know if you include that in part of the warm-up schedule and you know, like, do you do that right before you go on, or do you do that and then give the voice a, a chance to to rest no, no, for like five or ten be, minutes and then then away? Not even like I'm, when I'm talk, when I say blast, like I'm singing along with the intro while we're side stage. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm just doing it light and light and light and, and keeping it just really yeah light, flexible. And then and then I'll I'll give a couple of a couple of roars, like just just to make sure that it's in there, you know. Yeah. Yeah, not too much, not too much. But then, then of course, you know, there's another three or four minutes before I have to start singing, and yeah. then, you know, I'm yeah. fine. But right, right, right. And yeah, I, I don't need. I don't even know if that's helpful. I just, I don't really. As far as fun, me giving advice, I, you know, I just, just <laughs> do, do whatever, whatever comes out of your mouth. Is that's right. that's you, and then just right. work on it. You know, right. make it better. Do you, don't, don't. Do it for if you don't if you're not com comfortable, then you know sit on the end of your bed with your guitar or your piano and work on it until you feel it's good enough. Until, you know? yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, do I don't you, know what else to. Do Do you find you you up your water intake 
uh, before a tour, before sessions, or do you just maintain hydration the whole time? Because that, that's a um, big one for most, because most people don't drink yeah, enough big, water. Yeah, but in the early days, I mean, we drank everything but water and a lot of it. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, nowadays, I, yeah, I, I tend to, I'm, I'm pretty hydrated, man. I, I tend yeah. to drink a lot of water. And yeah. bio steel, love that stuff. I just like I'll I'll stay really really hydrated, and that, yeah. I'm sure that's I'm it's sure that's huge, helpful. It's a huge factor, and and pairing that with the you know with the humidifier, because uh, you know a lot of thing that a lot of things that people don't understand is that you know that saying you know if you have a cold you drink lots of fluids and get plenty of sleep. Well, part of that is that it, when you drink lots of fluids, you keep all the mucus that your body produces thin, and you can yeah. move it. Right. So if you just stay hydrated all the time, yeah. you're, you're, you're in, you're in great shape. And then, yeah. you know, the, with the humidifiers and the recovery after a show, it's, it's really, really important. And I was quite happy to hear you, you know, you figure out how to do it on the bus, you know, just to give yourself a chance. Yeah. It's, well, we, 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 you know, when I'm, when I'm, but sometimes I, like, I remember in the last, it must have been the last run or maybe the one pre one, one of the ones where I got sick like right off the hop. Um, it's like, well, we send somebody to go get a humidifier and we get a hotel room and then I'll just like hold up in a hotel room with the humidifier just blasting right in my face. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then just and just slamming water and slamming water. Yeah. Slamming water and just, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it that's... sucks, man. It's the worst. I, 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 I hate getting sick. It's I just. Know. It's brutal. That's the worst part of being a singer. It yeah. really is. Yeah, because yeah. it's not. And just it sucks for anybody sick. to be sick. It's it sucks for anybody to be sick. But I could be sick as a dog and still play a blazing guitar solo. You know, I might not enjoy it as much. I might not be doing loop de loops and jumping off the stack and you know. Yeah. yeah. But it, you know, I, these still work. Yeah. I and know. this is just taken away. It's and it, you know, and it's not your fault. Like nobody wants to get sick. It's just the worst. Yeah people it's waiting a, in the audience to see a great show and you're like i don't know if i can give them a great show i know i know it's a psychological thing like i said it's it's you know the 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 emotional stress of going oh christ what the hell am i gonna do tonight you know it's like <laughs> you know yeah. been there many times <laughs> it sucks um thanks for doing this man all right mitch i Good really you, appreciate it that, that's awesome hopefully uh, you know, hopefully there's lots of stuff in there for people to digest and, and, uh, and for sure, just get people thinking about what, what it is and how long, like, and, and, and what's the effort behind doing, you know, what you do. You yeah. Know, that's, well, the, that's the whole point. It's a lifelong pursuit, but it certainly is. It certainly is. So well, thanks, man. I yeah. really appreciate it. Dude, thank you so much. It's good. It's great to see you. And I yeah, should, I should nice circle to back you. for a top up soon because I'm we're heading out in uh, in April. I saw right. Yeah, I think it's yeah in April. So we're in we're in rehearsals in March, but maybe sometime in there. Like, sure. I know sure. we keep meaning to, but I I really I, I'm due. Yeah, sounds see good. See where we're at. See sounds how much good. I fucked it up over the last couple of years. <laughs> I think I'm okay though. It, it feels yeah. great. Like sounds when I'm healthy, great. It's okay. yeah, yeah, when I'm healthy, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, it sounds great. All right, buddy. All right. Thanks for watching. I'd like to give a big thanks to Ian for doing the interview and to Ryan Mellock from Square Eyes Collaborative for providing me with the video and the images. If you like this and perhaps learn something, please hit that subscribe button. I've got more stuff to come.